Um, you've come back to Australia and you've signed with Adapto Canaries uh, for this season. Is that the uh, fire in the belly to keep on playing rugby league? Yeah, so um, there was a couple of teams over there that were still keen for me to, to play, um, even a chance maybe to go to France. But once our visa were up anyway over there so like we had to make a decision so it was a very late decision to come home because we had the world cup and then okay, yeah. a couple of weeks back we just decided to come home so we come home and i was actually speaking to jeff robbo who um jeff robson who used to play down the coast or he's got like some connections down there and i said bro i'm coming home um do i want to see if there's any teams that are like a keen down the coast yeah. uh, it was so such a late last minute thing you know so he sent me a couple of numbers and um, you know a few teams who reached out and they were keen to get me on board. But that though was the way I ended up going. Um, so you know I'm doing a bit of um, it, it's a bit frustrating that they haven't the season doesn't start till April 22. So you know I'm sitting there with NRL games and the the final belly is definitely there. Like I'm not going to say that I'm 100 percent retired from NRL because the I watch the games and I feel like I can definitely add. Um, you know, make an impact in the game still. So my first and foremost, I'm going to go out down there in, in a couple of weeks and and start playing. Like I, it's a weird one. I've done I've done 14 preseasons and I feel like this is the fittest I've been. And I haven't done a preseason okay. like yeah. for my fitness. So the fire in the belly is definitely there. I'm just looking forward to getting out there, um, playing against these dudes down down in that comp, and we'll see what happens, bro. Yeah, just uh. Just being an ex NRL player, do you think there'll be a little bit more attention towards yourself? Well, I actually did an interview with um, Fletch and Joel a couple of weeks ago, and Fletch was telling me how he went down there. He goes, mate, you're going to have a lot of attention coming your way because they like to go after ex NRL players. But uh, I just say, bring it on. Like, um, I'm just looking forward to the contact of the game again. Um, it's been, you haven't played since the World Cup, and last year was a bit disturbed. I, um, like I had a pretty serious hammy injury, which put me out for six months, and I was lucky enough just to get back for the World Cup. So I was a bit underdone in the World Cup. So I'm just excited that I've done all this training. Um, you know, I feel like I'm really fit, strong, and um, I'm ready to go, to be honest. Would there be a, a slight chance of a NRL club uh, picking you up at all? You never know, bro. I'm not, I'm not going to close the door on it. Um, but... I'm just going to go down there and play. You never know. There might be a couple of teams who have some, uh, who have a couple of spots, who have, might have a spot that get some serious injuries or whatever it might be. Might have to give BA a call if there's a couple more injuries at, at um, Para, but I'm definitely not going to close the door on it. And yeah. I'm going to let my footy do the tap talking down there. And obviously, that's in the Dragons comp, like all the Dragons area or whatever. But um, I'm just going to go out there, rip in, and we'll see what happens, bro. And you might even uh, play against your old mate, Blake Ferguson. Nah, he's in a different he... comp. He's oh, playing... is he? Oh, yeah. I would have okay. loved to. I could have fixed his name for free for him. <laughs> <if they could. laughs> yeah, well, there was a bit of talk about that uh, recently, wasn't there? Uh, um, <laughs> you mentioned the World Cup there, and as I said, you've represented New Zealand, the Cook Islands, and the Maori All-Stars. Um how much of it, in three World Cups as well, uh, mind you, which is a pretty mean feat, um, how special is that for you to represent those nations and your culture? Man, it's it means everything. Um, to be And to be able to represent both sides of my family, so my my dad and my mum's side, so my mum's Māori, my dad's Cook Islander, so I was grateful enough. I actually debuted for Cook Islanders in 2009 when I was, it was about a bunch of us under 20s kids. Um, we haven't, None of us played NRL. We're still in the twenties, and we went up and played against Cairns. In the, um, I went up played in Cairns against Samoa, who had heaps of NRL players. You know, we just went up there for a holiday, pretty much. So, twenty year olds, we've all gone. Nineteen year olds, we've all gone up. Um, seven day holiday, we treat as a holiday, pretty much. How good is this? Yeah. We get to the end up beating Samoa, so, and the winner of that game had to go to PNG. So, we won the game, which we didn't expect to do it. No one expected us to win. And then half the boys had to go back to Sydney to pick up their passports because they were going out to PNG. So that's where it all started. And I was grateful enough to play to represent my dad there. But for me, the pinnacle was always to represent New Zealand. Okay. Yeah. For that for that to come along um, in 2017, um, to make you know, my, to play for my mum's side and to play like that's 
every kid's every New Zealander's dream was to either play for the All Blacks or for the Kiwis. So um to yeah, to tick those off, man, was it's something I'll always be grateful for and uh, memories that I'll last forever. And we see so much involvement in um culture uh wise and especially in those camps, don't we, in, in like World Cups and stuff like that. I I follow you on the socials and uh during those camps there's always the traditional dances and you guys really get into it. Yeah, the, nothing beats playing for your country, honestly. Like it um Brook Island's camp is different. Like obviously it's, it's I wouldn't say it's not as serious as New Zealand, um, but it's a little bit more laid back. And that's just how we are as Cook Islanders. We love playing the drums and getting the boys up to dance for the jumpers and that sort of stuff. So it's something that we really embrace. And it's good to show the young kids as well that who probably haven't been around their culture that much is like this is what it's like to be a Cook Islander or a Māori, whatever it might be. And um, for them to embrace that and learn about their culture as well. And no, nah, it's the. Playing for your country, nothing beats it, to be honest. Is there a representative highlight in during your career? Oh, it's it probably have to be the you – know, we lost the game, but the game against Tonga in 2017, that World Cup, um, I've never played in a – you know, if you think Banquest is wild when, they, when it's pumping, like this crowd is just something you've never experienced in your life. It was yeah. – it was the best crowd I've ever played in front of. You couldn't hear. I was playing next to Sean Johnson, who was my half. And when he was talking, or when we were talking to each other, we couldn't hear each other. And we're all yeah, three wow. from each other. That's how loud the crowd was. So um, even though we lost the game, we should have like we should have won, but we lost. It, that was the experience that I'll never forget. And um, yeah, it's good to to verse against my my good mate, uh, my brother Manu as well. So yes, yeah. Man, I, I would have loved to have played with him for the Kiwis, but he jumped. They all jumped shit late. It's good for them. It was good for the country. Look what it's done for the international game. So um, that was definitely a um, highlight for me. Yeah, it was. Yeah, definitely from them. They kicked on from that World Cup. And then we saw this year Samoa um, kick on from this year's World or last year's World Cup yeah, um, it's- make, making the final. But how good a player is Manu? I, I, I used to love him at Para. Oh man, he's yeah, he's definitely one of my favourites on and off the field. Yeah, <laughs> he's the most one of the most solid blokes. Yeah, on and off the field you ever meet, that's for sure. Yeah, no, I certainly wouldn't want to come up against him on the field. That's 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 uh, wouldn't want to come up that, against him. There's, there's, alley with him, that's for sure. Nah, that's it. Now, um, your sister Kiana's own career is taking off as well. Um, won a comp with Newcastle last year. Um, unfortunately, against Parramatta, but uh, that's, <laughs> all right. that's all right. But yeah, how proud are you of her forging her own career? In yeah, and that's well too. She's um, she's been the same. Like she, pre- I represent both sides of the family, playing for New Zealand and Cook Islands, and to win a ring last year, man, she beat me to that, which I'm a bit dirty about. But um, nah, like yeah, very proud of her. She's done the family proud, and that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of her, um. You've also teamed up with her with a, a CK athletic um, business. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that one. So her, her and Corbin have done a really good job um, with their own little business. Um, they started off as just sprint coaches, I'm pretty sure. So they learned all their craft off Roger Fabri, who yeah, the sprint coach guru. Um, they learned the craft from there. Then they've just brought it back to the shy and they, they started their own business. So they started like that. And then, um, and then I'm pretty sure it was only girls rugby league, like, it was like so speed and girls rugby league, but now it's just blossoming. You know, they've got, they've got boys, they've got girls, they've got sprint sprint sessions, um, rugby league sessions as well. So they're doing really well, and I'm um, I'm just excited to get in there and hopefully because they they work with a lot of like six to twelve year olds, so okay. a bit younger crew. Um, and because the girls have just brought in a like a, a tackle for girls in the junior league, so we've just been through to all the junior clubs trying to teach them from the ground up tackling and you know how to just the technique of tackling that sort of stuff so that's been exciting it's been good it's keeping me busy um but hopefully we can expand the business a bit more and i can get into coaching you know a bit more older kids where um can teach them more about the game and just pass on all my learnings that i've learned from over the years um onto the kids who want to hopefully play nrl in the future and if anybody's interested in uh finding out more about it where can they look up 
Yeah, so you can just jump onto um on Instagram. They got a page, CK Athletic Development, or they've even got their own website where 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 they do clinics and um that sort of stuff. So yeah, Instagram or even just on a normal website. Ah, uh, nice. Now, as I said in the intro, I used to have a little running joke that I used to pick yourself as as first try scorer every game. Um, uh, I don't know what it was. I think I just pick and stick. And uh, can you remember if you ever did score a, f- a first try in a game? I think you put a jinx on me. That's why, <laughs> I think, and that's why I just I wouldn't score first. I, I did score a, a few tries first. Um, for Roosters. Okay. Um, so my dad used to always say, mate, come on, need you to score first. I'm like, he did it first, then it was you. So I can't really remember if I did it, Par. I can't remember, to be honest. But um, I'd rather – I always just say, look, just get on whoever my winger is. They're going to – they're going to first, you know. Like, <laughs> I'll look after them before I look after myself. Yeah, well, uh, I think that Tigers game in 2019, I think you were the second try scorer, I think, in that game. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was too. <laughs> yeah. You you were close, but um, no, nah, I always thought that you had a great uh, leaping ability to knock down those cross field kicks uh, from the halfback, and then generally it would be the the winger or that would score the try. Or um, my also thought was maybe someone like Blake Ferguson to knock the ball back to yourself, and then you and then you score. So. The paper, hey, far out. <laughs> But that, that was a thinking about it, but uh, nah, it was just a little bit of a runny gag. But um, <laughs> for some common league questions, did, other yep. than your home ground, did you have a, a favourite ground that you used to love playing at? Um, I, I liked going to um, New Zealand, eh? Like, I, I liked playing at Mount Smart. Just They always had the Cook Island drums in the background too, so, like, you know, it was a very hot place to go to. The the crowd would just go crazy if, if the Warriors were on top. But I did enjoy going over there and playing against them. I know um, former guest Guru Junior, Eric Growth Junior, he he hated going to New Zealand. Uh, oh. <laughs> he, he did everything to try and get out of it, apparently. So um, speaking of that, was there a hated ground that you used to not like playing at and didn't want to go to? I wasn't a fan of ANZ, to be honest. It was just too big. Unless it was like our, our semi there was unreal, but playing home games there when it was – they probably had 15,000 in there, but it just felt like it was, you know, a couple of people watching. So it was always hard to to go there, especially when it was your home game and freezing cold and not much of a atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now uh... – I've been told that you're a great club man to have around the around the joint. Um, who has been the pranksters at the clubs that you've played for? <laughs> who have been the jokesters? Um, Jimmy Maloney at Roosters is only there for a bit, but like he's just an absolute pest. So he he was um, number one there um, at Para. Like you can't go past someone like Normie. He me and him. We played a lot of footy together on the same side as well. So we had a lot of banter amongst like ourselves. Um, Chris Sando was the same and in his first year. He was yeah. – <laughs> let's say those two together. Oh, you just not hear anything like it, eh? That, like um, they're definitely up the top of the list, that's for sure. Uh, Tyner didn't really have too many, but I'm always there and about amongst there trying to get we, – we actually got – um. David Gower, who was very thin on top for a long time with his hair, just wouldn't cut it. And um, myself and, and Norm used to just get into him. And he, when he come back to train 2018, he, he had a bald head. And, mate, it was probably one of the best days of our lives, to be honest. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they, easy targets, they were. Yeah, nah, that's fair enough. But as I said, you need those uh, people in and around the club yeah, uh, just to lighten the mood a bit. Uh, uh, who was there any sledges on the field uh, that you played with, and any uh, sledges that you can remember? No, nah, not really. Eh? Like Normie was the sledger. Like he was, he'd be on your team, but like he's the one that sledge. And I'm just like, bro, shut up. <laughs> but there, there, there wasn't that many out there to be honest. Eh? Like a bit of banter here and there, or just before Mitchell had signed, like uh, he'd signed to come to us. Eh? 
and like we played Tigers and there was a bit of banter in that game, like but no, nah, not not really, not that much sledging to be honest. Did did you tell Normie to shut up so the big forwards didn't run your way? I'm just like, bro, like what are you doing? Like I just thought it was so funny. Oh, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> well, like, like tease a couple of blokes together, like just not like, say that job people go, oh no, he's dropped another one on, you know, just like little little things like that. Yeah. To egg each other on, so yeah. <laughs> um, who would have been the hardest player to tackle? Now, we used to sit next to each other in meetings, and like once one would kick off, then we just like feed off each other and be a split us up. Like, no, you used to want to sit next to each other, so we had to sit opposite side of the room. It was like, it was like, good. like, good, good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, who who would have been the hardest player to tackle? Uh, I found like the little fellas, like Roger, RTS, Tedesco. Yeah. Those two players were um a lot harder to tackle than like the big blokes. Um, who would have been the toughest player that you think you played against? Oh, or with? Yeah, probably go with like. There's a few that come to mind. Like Manu is one that jumps straight to my mind. Uh, Boyd Cordner, he's top of the pile as well. Um, they just got those those two. They're, they're both back rowers too, but they've just got that sweet J eh, like where this fire. Like they did, they're one of the people that you want to play with straight away. They're the first people that chosen the teams. And, um, yeah, they're, they're the first two that come straight to mind, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, great players, both of them. And as I said before, Manu, one of my favourites. Now, um, we sort of touched on it a little bit earlier, but is there a favourite try that you scored during your career? Oh, it, that the opening game at 2019 at Bankwest. But I must say that the there's a little fun fact for you. I was the first bloke to score a hat-trick on Bankwest, and it was actually against... Um, like Benji, so it was Benji three hundred. Then we sort of ruined the party, and it was my first hat trick, and it was the first hat trick on that um on that stadium, which is pretty cool. Okay, oh well, there you go. I'm not too sure yeah. whether many people know that one, but uh, go. we've got uh, Mitchell who scored the first try goal, field goal, and yourself scoring the first hat trick. There yep, that's it. Like History, a... though. Yeah, History definitely. <laughs> great, great trivia question that one. Um. Yeah. Have a, a pump up song that you used to listen to in the sheds at all? Or? Nah, I just like I used to love just listening to cookie music before I ran out. Just the drums, I feel like it got my blood going and flowing a bit. So yeah, I just that before I go out. That's for sure. What about anyone else in the sheds? Did they have a a weird sort of routine or something you thought was a bit unusual or pretty pretty stock standard? Nah, it was pretty stock standard. Uh, yeah, nah. Yeah, no, nah. nah, that's all right. Um, what was your post game uh, meal of choice? Did you have like a, yeah, you know, some players go KFC or, or Maccas or, or something like that? Or well, we, games would finish late, eh? So there wouldn't be that much open. Um, straight after the game, it's hard to eat. So I would find myself maybe like one or two o'clock in the morning if there was a Maccas open, go down and get some food from there. But uh, it was good. It was always good um, earning a feed by um, having a good game and then go and enjoy some food after it. Bay Vista is actually a Parramatta. Yeah. That, especially the last couple of years, that was definitely one of my favourites. We used to get down there. Big George used to look after us and that unreal dessert. they got unreal desserts and big burgers, so that's definitely um, the place for me, Bay Vista. Uh, nice. Now, you've had some... Uh... Different hairstyles over the years during your career. Is there a favourite that you that you like? Oh, far out. That's actually <laughs> so my brother-in-law Eddie Pettiborn. It was his dumb idea to grow a hair in 2015. So from the start <laughs> of the year, grew a hair, and like halfway through the year, our hair was like in that ugly phase. So like, every time I see like a, a flashback in 2015, the hair's like it's not long, it's not short. Um. So then finally in 2016, I was able to. It was long enough to. Plaid it, and then 2017 it was just getting out of control. It was getting so long, and yeah, that lasted a couple of years. And um, yeah, there's no no real favorite, but that was that was a good laugh. Actually, the the brain that man was just it was game day ritual. Like you know, I had to get it done, 
and it would just take so long. So when I finally cut, I was like, oh, I don't have to do that hour of braiding my hair where I sit there and I'm complaining about this or my missus and that. And uh, yeah, it was just a relief to have to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, most players go for a walk or you know read a book or something, but you'll you'll get your hair braided. <laughs> well, they used to be so at one stage it was me, Tepai, um, Kenny Edwards had was getting his. So all three of us were bloody getting their hair done. Oh man, it was killer. He's another character, isn't he? Uh, Kenny Edwards. <laughs> Best in the business, him. <laughs> Especially his uh, his on field antics with the uh, what was it? The tap on the shoulder and uh, he used to uh, hug the huddles and bloody his cramping. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the like... cramps. Yeah, that was a, that was classic. I remember the one try he scored. I can't remember who it was against, but he took the quick tap and just yeah, took yeah. off and. Dragons, he, he fell over, got a penalty. He tapped, <laughs> tap in, and it was the first one I do. I said, "Bro, that's such a multi try that." Yeah, and, a... and now they pull everyone up for that. They don't like the quick taps and un, un, unreal. We'll we'll wrap things up with the personality set of six questions. Um, All right. Bro. Is is there a favourite sport outside of rugby league? Oh, I like all sports, but I do. I used to. I really enjoy backyard cricket. Eh? Okay. Yeah. I like, yeah, I used to play that when I was little, so we'll go with that. Is there um is there mandatory rules like you can't get out first ball and No, nah, uh, was can't hear anything on the full that was one of our main rules, but there was no no first ball, mate. If you get out, you're out, buddy. Over the fence and out. And... Over the fence is out, yep. Yeah. Um what's your specialty dish in the kitchen or on the barbecue? Well, I actually enjoyed making like oh, I've just learnt my old man's um, chop suey, which is a, a islander dish. So I'm, I go right up to that. I haven't cooked it for a bit actually, so okay. I might have to try that soon. Yeah, no, that sounds nice. Is there a person in the world that you'd love to meet, either dead or alive, if you had the chance? Oh, I'd love to meet Usain Bolt. Okay, yeah. I'd love to meet the fastest man in the world. That that'd be unreal. Get some sprint uh, sprint tips. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> now, I, I'm probably tipping I probably know the answer to this question, but uh, what's your favourite holiday destination? Oh, man. Well, it's it's tough now. Like, I, I'd always say Cook Islands, but, like, we've just come home and we've been to Greece. We went to Croatia. We went to Turkey. We went to all these beautiful places, so... It's good to know that there's beautiful places all over the world, not just on this side. Um, but we'll, yeah, we'll stick with, we'll, no, no answer, no answer for yeah. that one. Got Bali, got. I want to take the kids to Bali, so that that's definitely okay. the next one. Yeah, that sounds good. Just a, a quick question outside of the uh, set of six, but there's been a little bit of talk of a Pacifica team possibly coming in to the NRL in a four or five years. What what's your thoughts on that one? Man, well they've just I haven't actually watched them play, but it's there's a team in the Super 14 or whatever Super 12 or whatever it's called, Pacifica. But if that was to happen, man, I, I think it'd just be nothing but good for the game, you know, where the population is over, well over fifty percent, heading towards sixty percent of Polynesian multi players playing the game now. So it only be good for the game and um, if that was to happen, I would definitely love to get uh, amongst it and get in there in the coaching role or or some sort of um, role. Definitely down the future, that's for sure. Yeah, it'll be great to see. Definitely. Uh, now back to the set of six. If you're stuck on a deserted island, which three former teammates uh, do you not want to be stuck with, and why? Easy. <laughs> Marada, Tepai, and Kenny. Because they all don't shower, so <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the easiest question ever. I don't uh, shower, I was thinking, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, fair enough. Um, and the last one, who's your favorite band or solo artist to listen to? Um, I like like slow jams in that day, eh? so I, I, I like my slow jam music. We I actually went and watched a Hawaiian bloke, his name Josh the Toffee, and he was just singing old school songs of doom. So I'll go with him. He's he's very good. Has he got a, a song of choice that you like of his? Oh man, he's got so many different, like so many. Eh? Like he's a lot of island songs too, which I like. So 
nothing in particular, just everything in was was cracker. Ah, nice. Well, Brad Takarini, thank you very much for joining me today on the Paracay podcast. Um, I really enjoyed the chat. All the best for this season with the Dapte Canaries. Um, and hopefully one day we can catch up uh, again and say good day. And so thank you very much for coming on the Paracay podcast today. Cheers, bro. Good to see you, brother.